Howdy guys, Auto Edit Jason here, and no, your eyes don't deceive you. Yes, this is the Tahoe in the garage, and today we're gonna actually try to sort out the speedometer calibration to work with the new gears and tires in this thing. <laughs> Even though I've been driving it for a year or so like this, uh, and what, most of these that you see on the road don't have properly calibrated speedometers. Um, we're gonna try to solve that with this thing right here. No, it's not a Nintendo cartridge, game cartridge. It's a VSSB module that we can adjust. So let's take it over to the bench. We'll learn a little bit about this thing, make our adjustments and send it, see what happens. Okay, so here's what we got so far. This is what I've discovered. This is a really tricky thing because the 90s uh, were a very volatile time in automotive systems. Uh, we were switching from OBD1 was introduced and then phased out to OBD2. So our trucks are OBD1, so you can't just plug a tuner in and just tune and dial in things like you can. Like on the Jeep, change tires, gear ratios, you just pull up your tuner and change all that stuff. And this thing, it's not quite so simple. Um, I've done deep dives and I found people who say they've done that with a super chips for OBD1. I've never actually seen it. So I couldn't do it. I couldn't replicate it. I couldn't find one on eBay or anywhere. So the other night I just ended up down a rabbit hole that led me to this site right here. And this is UD module. I'll put links in the description to all of these things. And what I found is that you have to make a change to in a 95 specifically, 90, and this, it gets a little bit more clear once you get here and you wanna change this stuff. Cause I've just been making do with it for now or like have ways open or something like that. You know, it's just right to get this done. So ended up here, I'll put links in the description so you can do the research and figure out what year in the nineties you have on your truck and what will work best for you. So. This is what we're gonna do. What I found, in 1995, they use a VSSB, Vehicle Speed Sensor Buffer, or the year before this, they had a DRAC, love that, a Digital Ratio Adapter Controller. So, you know, you have a couple different things. So, 95, we got a VSSB, and then there was a couple options here. They could program it for you uh, to your tires and gear ratio, or you could get this DIY, dip module and this is so funny and what that does is it actually and I, I went and did a bunch more research and found this site that actually shows the inside of this thing so we're going to go ahead and open this up because we're going to make the adjustments now and sure enough ours looks like this but i'm just i'm just now seeing this is really interesting the dip switches i have on the one that i bought from this site have six adjustable jumpers and here on the site that is actually gonna show us the code to set them, it shows that there are seven and there actually are, I could actually count the, the solder points, there are seven that we have to adjust. So this is gonna get tricky. Apologize for not having this sorted out ahead of time, but we'll discover this together and see if we can make this work. Here's the basics of what's happening here, is we're gonna trick the computer or tell the computer to adjust this vehicle speed sensor. Because on this one, there's no gear. A lot of times on the older stuff, you would just change the gear on the tail shaft of the transmission. That would tell the different gear ratio and that's, that was how it works. So this is that awkward in between before OBD2 where you could just tell a comp the actual brain of the computer what to do. So I ordered this module here for 121 bucks. We went to this website, put, I'll put this in the description as well. So let's go down here and I'll show you what we're gonna do. So we're gonna go ahead and do a little bit of uh, calculation. So we have what's essentially the metric size of the 35 inch tire. So that measures out to be a 315 uh, section width, 75, 16. So we're gonna go ahead and keep entering this stuff in. So that gives us a tire height of 34.6 inches and we have a gear ratio of 4.56. So you would just enter this in for what you have. And that gives you an input ratio that this thing's gonna be looking for. So that is 0 0.830987, et cetera, et cetera. And then it tells you the jumper corresponding settings. So right here, now this is where we're gonna to have to make a kind of a, a educated guess here since there's seven numbers to set in the jumper and we have six actual adjustable things and typically I would uh, I would just order one and solder this myself but 
I like the, the versatility of, you know, what if I go 37s, you know, you never know. What's our number? It was 0 0.83098. So we'll go on down, we'll scroll down. Oh, so there's 0 0.836 and then 0 0.827. So we're gonna be down in here and I could just tell you right now, let me just double check our number, 0 0.8309. We're actually gonna be closer to this number, the 0 0.8. 827. So we're going to use this as our dip switch setting. Love saying that. I want to say a bunch more times. So let's go ahead and do that, right? So it's on in the first position. So that's a one there. And so as it shows you the jumpers here, we're going to go ahead and make the guess and it is on. So it, it, so I'll show you here. So see inside there, the jumper is soldered in place in the on positions. And then we just, the variables are on these six positions here. So we're lucky. And then here, the numbers inverse of speedo jumpers. And if you notice in the demonstration photo here, the only two spots that are inversed are the two spots that are empty here. So what we'll do is we'll do our code here. And then also that jumper is missing. So Again, that leads me to believe that this is the way this is supposed to go. So let's get in and change our jumpers across both sides. So I'm gonna just take a little, you could take a, just a little small screwdriver. I just have this little plastic dealio here that I'm gonna go ahead and adjust our jumpers to this. So the first position is in the on position and we have the actual metal jumper in place there. Uh, second position is off, we'll leave that down. Third position, We'll correlate to two on here, which is really confusing, but we'll go here and go just move that up. So we have, so it'd be in the third position, one, two, three is on. Then we have three offs, zero, zero, zero. And then the final position will be on. So that's what we think for our gear ratio and sizes, what we need. And now we'll just do the inverse of that over here. So the first position, since that's on is off and the jumper is missing there. So that's good. And then, so the second position will be on third position because that's on will be off. And then these three will be on. And then the last position will be off as the inverse. So that should do it for the actual adjustments here. Um, is this correct? I have no idea. It's our best guess or my best guess, given the data that we found on the internet together here. And, uh, looking at this, I think we're going to be okay. So what we'll do is we'll put this thing back in here. We'll put this back into the little, uh, cartridge here. And there you go. That is ready to go into service. Now let's get inside the Tahoe and I'll show you where this thing lives and how to swap it out. Now I recommend anytime you're gonna be unplugging and plugging in computer components, unplug your battery first. It's just safer. It's one of those best practice type of things where it's just better for the components, especially in this era of components. So we'll just do that. So we'll just push the positive cable out of the way. We are now, the vehicle is now dead. This is our winch, so we don't have to worry about that thing for now. Let's get inside and get our hands under the dash and figure this out. So here's our VSSB module. What we'll do is we'll take the glove box out first and that's just squeeze the two tabs, get that out of the way. And then inside here, you'll see the main brain PCM or computer box right here. We'll go ahead and clean that because that's how we roll while we're in here. And what we want to do is the VSSB is the box right underneath that. So we'll unplug this upper, this closer connector first. We got that one off. So essentially what we want to do to get this off is it's got to come off of its little pedestal there. And that's just slide it this way. And then it should want to come out. So now that we can reach this plug, we'll go ahead and unplug this. There we go. And then we'll get the main computer out. This gives you an idea of these little metal tabs that hold it in place. I knocked this one off while I was pulling it out. Pop that back in just like that. So yeah, there's the main computer box. 
get these out of the way for now. Down here is our VSSB box. So there's a plug here on this one. I'm gonna see if I can get that plug out just to free it up a little bit. So there's the, there's the plug for the VSSB. I'm gonna have just pull that out of the way so I don't damage it while I'm wrestling with this box here. There seems to be a tab on this side. I'm gonna guess there's a tab on this side. Okay. All right, we managed to get it out and keep all of the plastic tabs in place. I did not expect that. That's an added, added benefit of the moment here. And uh, we will return this for a $10 core charge to the company that sold us this one. So we will now plop this one in its place while we're here. All right, do you guys remember if it went in this way or this way? I don't remember. <laughs> Let's see, it's gonna go in whichever way that needs to go in. So it goes in, so it goes in label down, which makes sense. So we'll go ahead and get her back into place. And a little lower down. Okay. That's in place. Let's plug it in. So we're in place and plugged in. Let's go ahead and put our brain back in. I'll go ahead and tuck that in this way and give you an idea. There's these two little locating pins here that go into the little plastic cradle back there. So we'll just stash them in like this. Before we get it over there, we have these two color coordinated plugs. We'll go ahead and put that one on there. Actually, we'll go ahead and plug them both in while we have good access to it. Okay, and then we'll go on in with that. And that will go when they go into their little holes and that's about it for that. So, so that's done. I'm going to go ahead and send it and put the glove box back, back in for our test drive. All right, let's drive it and see what happens. All right, so I've gone for two test drives and I've bumped the numbers up twice now and I'm now smart enough to, instead of having to pull the whole thing apart each time, I just swapped it and it's sitting on top of the computer box. So now I'm just gonna unplug it and we're gonna keep tweaking it. It's just not quite right, it's getting closer. So I know I'm going the right way, I'm going up in numbers. So we're gonna tweak it one more time and then take it for another drive. So we started up here, way up here at the 0.827, and now I'm just, I went incrementally, and then now that I can get at this thing a little easier, we're now here, I'm gonna bump two more numbers, and we're gonna go to this one and give it a go. Oh, look at that, it's a on, 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 all the way across. Let's see what that, what that does for us. Fascinating. It's kind of fun. Kind of fun to just improvise and uh, figure it out as we go along. So this was the last itinerary. Now we're gonna go on all the way across. On, 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 one, 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 and then off, 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 all the way there. Let's go give that a try. I think this is gonna get it. All right, I think we got it. It took a couple more times and it was very nice to be able to just have that thing sitting on top of the computer so I could get it out. And it was a little bit of trial and error and I would skip a number or two, like a, a, a line or two on that chart. But I think we got it. Boy, it's just dead on perfect. I think we got it. This feels really good. I'm actually really stoked in the fact that, so it was affordable, 121 bucks for the module, couple minutes worth of work. We got this thing dialed in pretty good. Yeah, let's get up to 50, see what she does.
Wow, it is like really, really, really close. I am very happy with the results here. So like I said, I'll put all the links to that stuff and then you could do all of the trial and error to your gears and your tire size. So you can uh, dial it into perfection like this. Like it was close a couple times ago, but you guys know me by now. If you're new to this channel, hey, I'm a little bit crazy, just FYI. And I, I am a perfectionist on some things and then some things I'm like, whatever. So this one worked out. I actually trust the Speedo now. I could do my mileage and keep track of all that stuff, you know, like gas mileage and things like that because I'm a dork that way too. Boy, dead on, dead on, yeah. All right. Another quick observation, the transmission actually seems happier, which again, all falls in line and makes sense. It actually seems much smoother and shifts at a, what I feel a much more organic or natural spot. And that's again, because it was thinking it was at a certain speed that it wasn't. So the torque and all of that stuff wasn't lining up right. So the truck just feels happier. So this is, this is kind of a, a, one of those things that pays rewards on in those aspects as well. So highly recommend this one. I mean, that's right. It's right in that ballpark of price wise where it's affordable. It's very practical because now your junk is completely accurate. You don't have to continually do the speedo math in your head. So there you have it, a successful, easy, all skill levels improvement to your rig. And this will hopefully answer that really difficult question to answer how to accurately calibrate your speedometer in these mid 90s gm trucks and tahoes and suburbans this is how guys thank you so much for watching until next time enjoy your drive yeah accuracy good <laughs>